And so there is the there's the result. If I wrote that, if I uh, the final result is here in the notes. In case you didn't get it written down. Okay. So then we can use that rotation. We can use that rotation matrix to convert the principal stresses. So we know that SG, that's the stress tensor in geographical coordinates. Okay? We can get the stress tensor in geographical coordinates from the principal stress tensor right? through the rotation matrix RG. So if we perform this rotation first, right? So this goes from principal stress to geographical coordinate system. Right? <clears throat> and then this goes from geographical to borehole. And then we can get the stress tensor in the borehole. And so what that would look like is what we're talking about, the stress tensor would be if we took the borehole and whatever its arbitrary orientation <coughs> is and we cut our little representative cube for, that we use to represent the stress out of it, Right, and then so then the, the different stresses would be, you know, if this is the, let's see, if this is the, um, x b, then this would be y b, and z b would be down the hole, right? Then you'd have, you know, for every on every face, you have a, a stress in the shear and in the normal the component, right? And so then you'd formulate your full tensor like that. So the reason we care is because of wellbore stability, right? If the stress at the wall of the wellbore exceeds the strength of the rock, then you can have breakouts along the wellbore and your wellbore can collapse. Okay, so we need to know what the stress is at the wall of the wellbore. Okay, and so in in polar coordinates, and and by the way, now I've I've switched notations just to be clear. Um, <coughs> sigma is the effective stress, which is S minus what? Okay, yeah, I mean, S is a tensor, right? So it's, it's the pore pressure times the identity matrix, right? So that you have a tensor here, or a matrix, <coughs> right? So, so the, on the right-hand side of these equations are the components of the effective stress. So like sigma 3,3 three is the components of the effective stress in the, in the wellbore uh, in the wellbore coordinate system, okay? And then by converting that then to a polar coordinate system, we can get these guys, okay? Where then you have, for instance, your hoop stress. This would be your stress along the wellbore wall, tangential to the wellbore wall, right? So your hoop stress, for example, would be sigma theta theta, right? <clears throat> and then finally, with these guys in hand, what we really care about I'm not sure why my figure's not showing up. I'll fix that. But I'll just draw it. Basically what, what the figure was. Uh, 
was that we have on the on the wellbore surface there's some minimum and maximum tangential stresses and those are the ones that are going to govern the, if those are exceeded if those minimum and maximum tangential stress so the stress that's tangent to any surface of the wellbore if those are exceeded in tension, right, if it exceeded the strength of the rock, or in, or in compression, actually, but it's, you know, rock's a lot uh, lot stronger in compression than it is in tension. But if, so if those are, are exceeded, exceed the strength of the rock, then the rock would fail right there, and you'd have a wellbore instability. So uh, we haven't really talked about the strength of materials, the strength of rock, and, and what the constitutive models look like for rock. But that's what we're actually going to start next week. Okay, but then when we get back, get to that, so right now we're just sort of resolving the stress in all these coordinate systems. Then once we know a little bit about how rock behaves when stressed and when it fails, then later we can use this to make decisions about will the, you know, we can actually answer the question, will this deviated well fail under these stress conditions? Okay. So we can work an example. There I'm giving you a stress tensor, a, a principal stress tensor. So those, those are the principal stress directions for reverse faulting scenario. And I'm giving you the three angles that, so how this is oriented with respect to, um, with respect to the geographic coordinate system. So in this case, it's since beta and gamma are zero, it's, it's basically just a rotation in the plane. Right? So from, from SH max is 90 degrees from north. Right? And that's all, all it is. So it's just a rotation in the plane. Right? And so then what we want to do is we want to find those minimum and maximum tangential stress for an open hole well. Oh, uh, I guess I should point out in these equations, this delta P is the difference between the pressure in the well and the pore pressure. So if you're drilling and you have mud in there, then this could be something different than the pore pressure. But if it's open hole, then it's just the pore pressure. Right? 